Here we have an Intel CPU. This one is the 14900KS model that came in for repair. What is it that we need to fix with this CPU? We have no pins here. You know how we fix Ryzen CPUs? We get them in on a daily basis, even though some of them are very old, but still, customers mail them over so we can fix them. Broken pins, bent pins. If you look here, if you search Northridge Fix CPU, you see that we worked, we have countless number of videos. You see that we worked on 14900KS, we worked on Ryzen 5800, Intel on 8180, you have 13900K, Ryzen 5900X, Ryzen 5950X, 12900K, 13900KS, 3900X, and the list goes on and on and on. And I even have a video about Jace to Sense when he attempted to replace broken pins on the Ryzen CPU. You can watch that one. Just search Northridge Fix CPU and you will find all those videos. So what's wrong with this one? I see liquid metal, I see spillage, but it's within the boundary of this shield here. Let's take a look. So the question is, what is the problem with the CPU? Why do customers always mail those CPUs over to us? And why does the CPU look like this? The thing is, the customer attempted to split the CPU open so he can delete the CPU, add thermal paste or add liquid metal on the inside, put the cover back, and that will improve the temperatures on the CPU. It's another case of, if it's not broken, let's break it. The CPU is working 100%. Now in the process, what the customer did was he ripped off one, two components from here and he ripped off one, two, three components from here. That's a capacitor, resistor, resistor, resistor. Now when I first worked on a similar CPU, I struggled to know the values of those components. I looked everywhere online and I started to guess until I got another and another one Then I took measurements and I figured out the values of those components. So on this CPU, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six missing components. Let's read what the customer wrote and why he mailed the CPU over to us. The customer said, referral source, YouTube, of course. Description, I removed the lid after which the CPU will not post. I may have scratched something. Scratched is not the right word, but it's ripped. Rip six components. How can that CPU post if you have six missing components on there? Now, those components are size 402, SMD component size 402 for the capacitor and the resistors. And where would we get those components from? I always mention it. I mentioned it in every one of our CPU videos. We carry and sell SMD books. Okay, This one is size 805 capacitor SMD book. 8,500 components here, and we have a total of 10 books. We even printed the number on the side. So if you have them in a bookshelf, you can easily know what this book is. Is this 805? Yeah, 805C. So this is size 805 capacitor. And every component, every capacitor value that you want, for the most part, size 805 will be in this book. Now, for this repair here, we need size 402 and not 805, okay? The books, they look something like this. You can flip and read the values of every row, and that's how you will be able to get the components. Are you going to go online and buy the value of each component on that CPU? It doesn't make sense. If you are fixing a laptop, you're going to refer to those books. If you are fixing a Nintendo Switch where you need a component, you need to refer back to those books. If you are fixing a Mercedes-Benz ski fob where you have a missing capacitor or resistor, you need to refer back to those books. If you are a hobbyist or in the same type of business, no exception. Those books are a must. All 10 books, size 201, 402, 603, 805, and 1206. Five books for capacitors and five books for resistors. So we're going to get those components from the books and we're going to restore them. We're going to grab the 402 
resistor book and we're going to grab the 402 capacitor book. Now let's go over the values of the components in case you are wondering. I shared that information in previous videos but let's go over it one more time. The value of this capacitor is 100 nanofarads. We have 150 ohm resistor. The one next to it is 2.2k resistor and we have 100 ohm resistor here. As for the left, the missing ones are 150 ohm resistor, 150 ohm resistor. Without wasting any time, let's go ahead and prep the pads and we're going to solder the components on the CPU. Original Inventac Amtac flux. And like I said, if you're a hobbyist or in the same type of business, we carry and sell all the tools that we use on our bench for the most part, including the genuine Amtec Flux, and we are a major distributor of the Flux. We sell hot air stations, soldering stations, thermal cameras, tweezers, braid wig, power supplies, this amazing microscope, articulating arm, fume extractors, everything. One-stop shop. Just log into northwishfix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. We're going to be using NF.mini solder pen. NF stands for Northridge Fix. All our products are branded as NF. Now we have a lot of glare on the board. What do we do when we have a lot of glare? I always mention it as well, anti-glare light, the Northridge Fix anti-glare light. A very popular item in our shop. And let me show you how it works. Look at this. Now we do not see glare anymore. Before, with the ring light, the image looks like this. Glare, reflections, you can barely see what's going on on the board. We switch to anti-glare and magic. Whoa, what in the world? Customer added this so liquid metal does not spill, but it's going to be a problem. You saw how when we applied heat, how that thing shrunk and fell apart big mess the cpu is working and has more than enough power and then customers decide that they want to split the cpu open they want to delay the cpu so they can improve the temperatures by five degrees Let me put the CPU in a board holder because it's wobbling. This resistor is 150 ohms. And since we have this strip already out, let's do the other 150 ohm resistors on the side here. Both of them are 150 ohms.
Now, what is the job of each resistor on the CPU? How about you do your thesis on it and let me know. Leave it down in the comments. We have two more resistors to solder. And then we can clean up, invoice, and mail it back to the customer. Let's grab a 2.2K resistor and a 100 ohm resistor. Oh. That component tried to escape to the ninth dimension, but I got it. I picked it up in mid-air. It was flying up to my face and I grabbed it. Just like when Clint Eastwood shoots the hanging rope in the good, the bad and the ugly. That myth was actually busted. They got a guy who's really good with guns. They put the hanging rope and a bag of sand and they told the guy to shoot that rope to see if that rope would break. And the rope did not break. The rope would twist, it would twirl, but it did not break. In the Clint Eastwood movie, you would see that he shot the rope and he saved that person from hanging. The rope broke. Let's grab a 100 ohm resistor. I mean, look, with the anti glare light, we cannot even tell that we have flux on the board. Let me turn on my ring light. That's how it looks like under the ring light. Back to anti glare. Magic. Beautiful. What more do you want? Now the customer can clean rest of the mess on this CPU. I'm not going to remove this for him. And I'm not going to remove liquid metal for him. He can clean it by himself. Because what if we clean that liquid metal for the customer? And then he complained. That liquid metal is holy. How could you remove it? We are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video. Thank you, Ivan. The customer's name is Ivan.